Hey guys, how are you going? Sorry if I sound uh, croaky. Yeah, because I've uh, <clears throat> completely just uh, lost my voice today. It's 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 gone. It's it's done. Um, if you kind of haven't been keeping up with the um, <laughs> with the uh, socials, I um, I kind of visited uh, two schools today. It was. Uh, I'm, I'm like still in a high at the moment it's it's such a good feeling um i visited um what was it i visited uh Gelson, not Gelson, uh westlake girls first for a real quick visit uh i said i dropped over in a calculus class there said a few hellos and then i pretty much spent the afternoon at uh westlake boys from like i don't know from like midday onwards and um <laughs> all i can say is just wow that's that's uh that's pretty epic it was a pretty epic day I've, I've got to make a video for it i've got some real um little photos that i need to put up put together and put it together so yeah that was um that was incredible it was incredibly awesome um anyway look that was the fun stuff of it i did or <laughs> Yeah, Arav, um, like, I'm going to be honest, Arav, I think I remember you, um, I do remember you from one of the classes, um, one of the kids actually called out your name, and um, like, I have to say, it's like, I don't think I've ever signed that many calculators before, I think that was like close to maybe 100 and 150 maybe calculators, that was a lot of calculators I signed today, which was, which was crazy, um, but look, um, look, enough, enough with that, let's just kind of uh, get on with that work. Uh, if there is any uh, Westlake guys here today, uh, look, loved loved my time there today. Uh, with even with Westlake um, girls, there was for only for a short time, but I would have loved to stay there for a little bit longer. Uh, but absolutely enjoyed my time, and uh, thank you so much for all the um, just the kind words um, today as I was walking at your guys' school. So it was really cool. <laughs> Ravi, where, oh, Mrs. Oh, Graham is actually here. Thank you again, Bex, for the for the invitation. It was it was just absolutely awesome. And I'm still in a bit of a just uh, lost my voice completely, but um, uh, like yeah, it's it was really awesome to do all of this. All right, look. Anyway, look. Let's uh, push that aside. Um, and I know a few folks have kind of said, "Oh, look, what about my school? What about this?" Um, I'm. Oh, speaking of that, I think uh, I gave away about like. I think it was about 10, maybe 10 t-shirts I gave out at the school and a couple of hats. The hats were a first time thing. Uh, just kind of a couple of guys, uh, who was it? Uh, Pavan and uh, Pavan, Pavan and Zach kind of helped me out throughout the day. They were looking after me. Uh, so yeah, massive thank you to you guys as well. So yeah, so look, um, I'm going to spend like maybe another 10 more seconds talking about this and then we're going to go, all right? So um, if, yeah, uh, look I know it's like the end of term it's probably a bit hard for your teachers to kind of um, organize it uh, but uh, look if you do want me to come and have a chat with you guys would love to um, I've got a couple of free periods where I can actually kind of readjust my timetable a bit and could make a visit um, just ask your teachers and we'll go from there all right okay cool so hang on so I got um, I got I got this question given to me um, during uh, one of my uh, Instagram kind of one of the kids asked me this um, question up there so I've actually put down uh, two uh, graphs here I've put down the points for you guys as well just in case that you need to know and um, and I guess the first question is you know what are we looking at and I'm not gonna tell you guys anything except that I'd like you to come up with the equation for these two graphs that's all I'm gonna tell you guys all right, so if you um, haven't actually done this yet, I would strongly recommend that you watch the um, three uh, previous videos in this series, which kind of covers your linear, uh, quadratic, and exponential. But if you have watched it, <laughs> uh, I, I just realized I actually still got the sticker. Uh, take that off. Yeah, but if you have actually um, kind of know what you're doing, then uh, feel free to go through with the answer and then see what uh, what we get. I'm, I'm going to give you guys maybe a couple of minutes to have a go at this, um, and then I'll go through each question. And I think the main question uh, one of my viewers was asking was, how do I know a graph is quadratic or exponential? And I've purposely put this 
in here so that you guys can kind of um, have a play with these numbers and try and figure out which one is a quadratic and which one is a um, what do you call it? Which one's a quadratic and which one's an exponential? Or which one is a straight line? If I got a straight line in there, I'm not going to tell you. So tell you what, I'll give you guys about two minutes to try and work this through. Uh, you can use a graphics calculator if you want. If you want to just um, hang around and kind of say, hey, actually, I don't know how to do this. Uh, that's okay as well. So that's what I'm going to go through. I need to really take the sticker off. And that, that's like stuck really well. That's cool. Uh, Ravi, yeah, sure. Um, give us a second. Now, let me just find it. So I think it's basically all of the TEG tutorials from this year. So I'm going to post a link very shortly. Now, I know that some of the um, future uh, playlists, the future videos are going to pop up there as well. But I will show you where it is. Uh, where is it? Okay, so that's the playlist I've posted right now, and as you can see, this is the one that we're doing currently doing at the moment. Uh, so the three that I've done prior to this, which is these three, um, this will cover linear, this will cover quadratic, and this should cover exponential. All right, so those three videos that I've done there, that should cover the basics. Um, if you are kind of stuck and you're like, I don't know where to start from. Those three uh, videos are a really good spot to kind of start um, working from. Yeah, passion cat. I'm not gonna lie. Look, um, I, I got, I got. This is this is like cool, right? Like, I, I actually really, really think this is awesome. Like the fact that I actually have Infinity Plus One underneath it. That's, I got, I got to treasure this. It's pretty cool. Maybe I should have like a collection of stickers of where I go from. Yeah, no worries, Ravi. Take care. Uh, Masha, I'm just going to do this couple of questions first and then whatever you guys want to work. I was hoping to do a couple of um, quadratic word problems because um, that always seems to kind of cause a bit of grief for people. Um, otherwise, we could actually pick up um, questions from questions from uh the exam paper uh, i can't believe i'm gonna say this but i actually remember this kid's name hi toby i actually remember signing a calculator today because i thought that was such a cool last I'm, I'm hoping this is right unless you've got another brother or somewhere it's somewhere else yeah all right archies let's let's actually do that oh so it was you yeah i remember reading that name and i'm going man this is such a cool name Okay, so let's actually go through this question here, right? Now, the first thing is I, I purposely um, kind of did this, but um, so you guys can kind of see this. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is, um, you know, the best way to do this is I, I always kind of take, I'm going to take the table separately, right? So I've got X and I've got Y. I've got minus 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 9, and 18. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to actually look at both of these tables side by side so that you guys can see what's actually happening here. So I've got 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 1, 7, and 25. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the first difference. So in this case, I've got my plus 5, plus 7, plus 9. So this is my this is what I call first difference, right? Now in the in the second uh, set of table, I've got plus two, I've got plus six, and then I've got plus eighteen. Now, what's really really important is um, with quadratic, and this is something that's actually worth remembering. Uh, with uh, quadratic. Um, is you've got to actually go um, the second difference is plus two right now what i mean by second difference is the difference between five and seven is plus two the difference between seven and nine is plus two now if that blue number is always the same if it's always the same uh, then um, guess what that is going to be a quadratic so this left hand side uh, one here the table here is actually going to be a quadratic 
and that's because that blue number which is the second difference is the same number now if we look at the second difference of this other graph we've actually got plus 4 and then we've got plus 12 now as you can see the second difference is not the same all right so that's how we know that it's not actually a quadratic but what we do notice is it's really important that you notice what's happening to the first difference now you've got 2 6 and you've got 18 and you can kind of say that actually I know that 2 times 3 is 6 6 times 3 is actually 18 so that the second dif like it's not really a second difference but it's like it's the first difference is actually getting increased by a ratio of 3 now whenever you're doing ratio you're actually thinking about doing exponential So this is a, a really good way to kind of figure out what it is that you're working with, especially when you don't have the full picture of the graph, whether you know it's a, sometimes you'd be like, well, is it exponential, is it quadratic? I don't know. Um, but what you can do is with the table, you can take it out and you can kind of work through that. All right, so um, with the quadratic, I'm just gonna solve it real quickly. Uh, for some people might be like, well, I wanna, it's a bit hard because in this case the quadratic I've just given you three random points so put it in the graphics calculator and pull out the answer you should be good to go or if you want you can do it the long method which is um, doing the ax squared plus bx plus c now that's just too much work so I prefer doing the um, quadratic formula in uh, sorry using the calculator and actually doing that now let's see if it actually is gonna work out because I know sometimes the calculators can tend to be a little bit of um, a little bit grumpy right like sometimes they don't seem to work so I'm gonna go with uh, 0 1 2 and 3 and I've got minus 3 2 9 and 18 and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on graph graph 1 calc and then I'm looking for quadratic which is x squared and as you can see it is telling me what the a value is which is 1 B value is 4 and C value is 3 so the quadratic I'm gonna get uh, 1 x squared plus 4x minus 3 or of course we can write this as x squared plus 4x minus 3 that's the quadratic formula looking at the exponential now I know some people would be like well you know can you actually do the exponential curve in um, in the graphics calculator now unfortunately I've tried all kind of shortcuts I've, I've not figured this out um, if somebody has figured it out in the graphics calculator please 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 share with me I'd love to share it with the rest of the community uh, but here, um, there's only one thing that I know how to do, which is I actually use this uh, particular formula, which is ARX plus C. And I know that the R is uh, the ratio, which is increasing by, which is 3. So I'm going to write this as A3 to the power of X plus C. Now, at this point, I'm going to use a couple of um, points to try and work it out. So from the table, I can see that I've got 1, 1, and I've got 2, 7. And I'm going to use uh, uh, 1, 1, 2, 7. Yeah, let's use that. Yeah, let's use that. So we're going to get uh, 7 is equal to A, 3 to the power of 2 plus C, which is 7 equals 9A plus C. That's one equation. Then the second equation is 1 equals A times 1 squared plus C, which is 1 is equal to A plus C. Okay, so putting them uh, kind of together, uh, what I've got is, I feel like I've made a mistake somewhere here, but it's fine. I'm just going to keep going. 1, 1, 1, yeah, A plus C, that all looks good. So I'm going to subtract both of them. So I've got 9A plus C is equal to 7. 1A plus C equals to 1. Why does this feel incorrect? 3 to the power of 2, ARX plus C, everything looks okay. Am I making a mistake here, guys? I'm going to go subtract each of them. So I'm going to get 8A, 0, 1. Did I copy this wrong? No, I didn't copy it wrong. 1, 1, 2, 7, looks good. 8A, C minus C is 0. 7 minus 1 is uh, 6. No, no, what am I doing wrong here? I'm doing something wrong here. Ah, the, yep, 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 yep. Thank you, thank you. I was like, something is not right here. 
I felt it straight away. Thank you for picking that up. So that should have been... I went the other way. Good pickup. Good pickup. See, this is what I was talking about. You make mistakes all the time, and it's all good. Uh, so here we go. Uh, ratio is 3 to the power of 1. So is that better? Yeah, that's much better. So I've got 3A plus C. Thank you so much, for, uh, guys. Appreciate it. So then we've got 9A plus C equals 7. And then 3A plus C equals uh, to 1. So I've got to subtract all of them, which means I'm going to get 6A. C minus C is 0. 7 minus 1 is 6. So A is equal to 1. Now, if A equals to 1, I've got 3A plus C is equal to 1, which means 3 plus C equals 1. C is 1 minus 3. C is equal to negative 2. So the equation, the exponential equation, is A is 1, so I don't have to write it. And I'm going to get 3x minus 2. All right, so um, going to the chat. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kati. I didn't mean to steal your calculator, man. Like, I'm, I'm glad you got it back. That's the worst thing I could do. Well, it, it's weird. I'm, I'm, I'm not a YouTube person. I'm, I'm actually real. I'm a, I'm a teacher, you know. So, uh, thank you, Vishal. I kind of picked that up. Um, ratio of three. Uh, Hey, Durian's back. <laughs> y equals negative 1 times 3. I'm not sure how you got that negative 1 there, um, Kyananjin. Hey, Marco, welcome back. Oh, sorry, I, I did see you there. Um, okay, so uh, any questions with this? Um, and then we'll, what we'll do is I'll see if I can pull up a um, couple of quadratic questions from the past that maybe we can actually work through. Or at least similar questions, yeah. So, uh, what do we got? Single fire, blah blah blah. Who cares? Uh, Forty. Fifteen, fifteen, fifteen. I want a quadratic equation. Oh, lovely okay so this is an old question but look it's still viable to do these types of questions here so I'm gonna paste this first 3x minus 2 this is 2011 Wow, this is going right back into the past 2011 d1 and 2 <clears throat> Cool. Here is the question coming up. Um, Mighty Godzilla for that. Uh, Josh, no, that, that I think that one would be this 3x, the exponential curve would be like um, an achieved, unfortunately. Exponential curves, especially the basic ones, it comes comes out as achieves. Um, but you need uh, AXR, now A times R to the power of X. No, Ganonjin, you actually need the plus C because that's actually going to make the exponential graph move up or down. Um, Mighty Godzilla, you can assume it. I mean, like if you actually kind of... Um, you know, if you do enough of these types of questions, like I'll be honest with you, Mighty, like um, what they do is like they've got two to the power of something, three to the power of something, uh, you know, they don't really complicate it too much. So if it's an achieved question, I think you can just go direct. And if they're asking just for the equation of the question, I think you'll be all right with um, assuming that the asymptote is at negative two. Uh, Jonathan, unfortunately, I've not learned it yet. I've tried a couple of combinations and I've uh, struggled struggled to kind of come up with it to use the calculator. Uh, Weber, I, I did put a playlist up before um, that I'll actually pin to the pin the message. So any tutorial that you see before this, if you can click on the playlist, you'll see the live tutorial happening right now. 
if you actually go back to any of those previous three tutorials um, you will be um, you should be fine with that uh, no worries Godzilla all right guys so we're gonna do this question here um, and what I'll do is I'm gonna give you guys a bit of time to try and work this question out all right so firstly what is the time right now 821 so I'm gonna go through the answer for part one at about 823 so we'll go through this at 823 so give it a go just see what it is that you can try and do and then we can try and work from it Vishal, that's not a problem, all right? Um, you, you've, you've kind of made the decision to be here, and that itself is, uh, you know, you're, you're here to learn, which means it's all good. Even if you say you don't know how to start, just got to listen in, and then we'll try and uh, work through, right? All right, so we got about another five seconds. Okay, so now, like, look, it, it's actually telling you, like, this is a, you know, for, for a second, take tables, equations, graphs out of your head and just think about um, the path of a ball when a child actually kicks it, right? And it says, you know, blah, 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 it's, it's modeled by an equation. Now, let me, uh, let me put this out for you guys, right? Now, you have done three equations. So this is how I kind of look at these types of questions, right? So you've done three equations. One is linear, one is quadratic, one is exponential. Now, if I was to draw all those graphs, there's only like kind of, I think there's about eight potential graphs. So you'd have a straight line that goes like this or like this. You could have a parabola that goes like this or goes like this. You could have an exponential that goes like this or this or this or this. So, you know, you kind of get what I'm trying to do there. terrible terrible graph okay now if I look at this these are the eight graphs that you probably have been working with right and now what you got to think is that well you know if I kick a ball which of these eight graphs is gonna best represent the ball right and and this is how we kind of go with this right and so you go well you know it's not gonna be the straight lines there's no kid that's gonna keep kick a ball and this is gonna keep going in a straight line it's just not possible Same, it's not gonna keep coming down and you can definitely not do this so already you know logically that this is the only possible way for this to actually work. Now that's a parabola. So that's kind of telling you, you are going to be working with a parabola shape. Now they've given you uh, the formula, which is H is equal to minus A X, X minus six, right? Now, I want you to think about it like this. Now, we know that this is going to be a upside down parabola for starters. But if I have an XY, I'm going to try and see if I can select this. So if I have an XY gra um, axis, the question is, where is this parabola going to look like? So, and I, and I want you guys to particularly think like this. If I put this as the height, this as the X, which is the point from where it is kicked. And I think it's actually saying that, look at this, X meters from the point where it is kicked. So if I was to take this as a path, path of the ball, then what's gonna happen is this path is something like that. It's actually starting from zero and then it's gonna come in, eventually it's gonna fall on the ground. Now I know my graph is not perfect, it's kind of going underground but let's ignore that part for now all right now what we what it we also know is that the maximum height of this ball is at two meters now two meters is about there 
How do we know that? We know that because uh, the ball has a trajectory and it's going to reach a maximum height and it's going to kind of drop off. I, I, I just kind of saw that. I was like, two meters is not really that high, man. It's like the same height, almost the same height as me. Uh, but anyway, um, how do we then figure out the A, a value? Now, Here's the thing that you guys need to know about this particular formula. The clue is actually given to you right here. All right, when they said x minus six, we know that the height of the ball is gonna be zero at two points. The first point it's gonna be, the height is gonna be zero is there, and the second point is going to be there. So we already know that because zero is when they when you first, when the first, the child kicks it, that's gonna be a height of zero. And then when the ball lands, it's gonna the height is gonna be zero again so with that in mind I am going to put H is equal to zero and I've got minus a X times X minus six now you don't really need to do this step but it does help uh, you could have directly gone and put what the two values are if you know it but what I'm gonna do here is I've got negative a X is equal to zero because remember this is going back to what we did for algebra and the MCAT we've got two brackets that multiply to equal to zero so we got negative ax equals to zero or x minus six equals to zero. So x is equal to six and here x is equal to zero. So my two points are zero and six. So that means halfway point between zero and six happens to be three. So basically what that's telling me is that when uh, the distance from where the ball was kicked at three, uh, three meters, the height is actually two meters. So we can write that as a point. So three, two, which means X is equal to three, H is equal to two. So which means we can say two is equal to negative A times three, three minus six, two is equal to negative A times three, negative three. And uh, sorry, I kind of gonna have to work it out here. Two is equal to nine A and then a is equal to two over nine. So um, that's pretty much how you get this question. Now this question is actually worth a merit for finding uh, two over nine. Uh, if you actually substitute three and two, and I think if you even if you just figure out that that value is, let me just check, use three as midpoint of the flight. So using three here for midpoint of the flight is gonna get you an achieved. <laughs> um, look, Marco, like, I mean, you can probably get, like some people can get it in less than 30 seconds. It doesn't mean anything. It just means that um, I want to be able to give folks um, the full understanding so that when you do face problems like this, you kind of have some understanding. Now remember, parabolas are symmetrical. Most of these types of questions, they use this technique with um, the upside down parabola. So as long as you figure out the two endpoints, you just uh, find the midpoint of it and then you're pretty much uh, good to go there. Uh, 100 ping further what I've done is um, I've actually uh, pinged uh, pin pinged pinned the uh, playlist for TEG um, the three tutorials that I did prior to this live are really good for um, kind of helping out with achieve questions um, would recommend you kind of watch them before coming to the word word questions um, you still have plenty of time all right guys any questions with part one here I'm, I'm definitely gonna lose my voice by the end of the night today. It's gone. I can feel it. <laughs> all right. So I'm assuming that we're all good. Uh, if you are good, let's. Um... How do you mean big tables, Joe Smithies? <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not sure what type of question you're asking for. Maybe if you can find a question from the old exam papers or maybe even just um, flick, me, flick me a picture of a question. I can probably have a look at it. 
All right, if part one is good, let's have a look at um, part two. Uh, yes, Vishal, sorry, I missed that. Yes, you are right. It is from the halfway point because half of, um, basically we're looking at the midpoint of zero and six. So you just add the two numbers and you divide it, divide it by two. Okay, so if you guys are okay with part one, let's try part two. Um, I'm going to give you guys, what time should I give you guys? 31. So let's go through the answer at about It's interesting for this next question, the type of grades they give. What is the two from? Uh, Dolphin, I need a bit more info from your question there. Uh, this is old school, um, Gyananjan. We're looking at 2011. All good, Michael. Mm. Terpe, everything looks hard at the beginning, but after a few couple of attempts, starts to make sense. But also, I'm going to say something to you, Terpe. Instead of saying it looks hard, flip the language, buddy. Flip the, flip the language and uh, instead of saying this looks hard, say this looks challenging. Because your head starts to go, Ooh, if it's challenge, then you start to look for how to kind of get past the challenge. All right, a little bit of mindset shift thinking. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why, Vanch, because I think half the country was like, God knows where. We're all stuck in our own little bubbles. It was such a crazy time. But anyway, look, let's go through this question here. Now, um, this question here, um, it's there's there's a lot happening here, right? Like for example, I would I, I would almost say this question has like so many different ways in which you can do it. Uh, so you could actually decide to have um, because you're looking for the equation of the height of the ball. So theoretically, there's three situations that you could do, right? So let me kind of show you guys what I'm talking about here. Uh, situation one, situation two, and situation three. So what do I mean by that? Like uh, first, I've just put like the X and Y axis down here, right? So situation one is where you might actually say the ball path is looking like this. Uh, situation two is where you might say the ball path is looking like this and then situation three is the ball path that actually looks like this um, and it doesn't matter which one you actually go with all right there's no kind of like oh this is the right way or this is the wrong way and so on what's what's kind of important is uh, let's have a look at what are all the useful information that we could actually work out from uh, and then we can actually go from there all right now both the left and the right one they are going to be intercept method because if you look at it uh, I've got this as zero and the ball is landing 10 meters away 
would prefer it if it can kind of join so if it's actually 10 meters away that's going to be positive 10. now if you look at the left hand side uh, if it's 10 meters away when we put it in a cartesian plane we're going to get negative 10 and zero uh vishal in a in a way you could uh in a way you could um but i'll i'll, I'll show you. you you're actually on the right path there so you there's nothing wrong with what your theory i would actually recommend you to try that answer vishal that just try it and see what happens um now the next thing that we know is that when the ball cr um, passes the crossbar it's at a maximum height of 2.5 meters um now the crossbar is two meters above above the ground that's almost like useless information is it yeah two meters i don't even know why they have got the crossbar information access place to the left hand x minus 10 blah 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 yeah that's really weird okay so it looks like there's a bit of a, a bit of the crazy one which is that um crossbar is two meters i don't know why we need that information in this i'm trying to look at it the ball passes over the crossbar when the ball passes over the crossbar it's at a maximum height of 2.5 meters so basically this value here is going to be 2.5 Now, of course, the middle one, I forgot to do that. That's going to be minus 5 and positive 5 because the distance between minus 5 and positive 5 is 10. Yeah, I think I think it's uh, it's uh, useless information by the looks of it, about the 2 meters above the ground. Um, so here we are. We've actually got... Uh... Yeah, it is. It is. Definitely, I think it's useless because we're looking at the path of the ball more than anything else. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come up with the equation. Now, um, Vishal, you were actually talking, was it Vishal? Yes, it was Vishal, wasn't it? Vishal, yeah. So Vishal actually asked, can I actually use the AX and X minus 6? Uh, you, instead of the 6, putting in the 12. I think it'll work because you've got negative AX, X minus 10. <clears throat> and then, but we need a point. All right. And, and you know the point is actually given right here because half of zero and 10 is five. So that right there is gonna be five and 2.5. So if I put that in here, I'm gonna get 2.5 is equal to negative A, five, five minus 10. 2.5 is equal to negative A, five times negative five. 2.5 is equal to 25A. And then a is equal to 2.5 divided by 25 so a is equal to 0 0.1 now that's uh, doing the intercept the intercept method there so your equation is going to be uh, y is equal to negative 0 0.1 x and then x minus 10 that's one of your answers Point x squared. Yep, 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 yep. That's all good. Now, hang on. I'm missing something here. A is equal to zero point. A is equal to zero point one. Why is this becoming plus ten? Have these guys made a mistake? Have I made a mistake? Let me just check the answer schedule, guys. Uh, x is equal to minus 0.1x squared place, x axis placed at the right hand end. No, I'm looking at the left hand end. What do they got? Oh, no, that's fine. That's actually fine. That, that's, that's the correct answer. Um, I will actually do this. Um, did you guys want me to show you guys the other method as well? Or, because I mean, you could have done it in the vertex. You could have done a vertex method here as well because remember vertex method is going to be like a x minus h squared plus v so a 
and then your vertex is 5 and 2.5 so I'm gonna get x minus 5 squared plus V y is equal to 2.5 which is a um, no hang on what have I done here I've done a couple of mistakes so that's gonna be the vertex form there and then I'm gonna substitute a value so I'm gonna use 10 0 to substitute it in and I'm gonna get 0 is equal to a 10 minus 5 squared plus 2.5 rearrange minus 2.5 is equal to a times 5 squared 5 squared is 25 and then a is equal to negative 2.5 divided by 25 and I'm gonna get a is equal to negative 0.1 so the equation in a vertex form is going to be negative 0.1 x minus 5 squared plus 2.5 Jonathan, there's not three answers. It's just three different ways of doing this and each one of them you've got like vertex form or uh, generalize AX squared plus BX plus C format or um, intercept form. So potentially you literally have like nine answers that you can come up with. Oh, this grade is an excellent question, by the way, because um, I think the reason they... I think the reason they actually put this as an excellence back then say back then because one you've got to come up with the equation but also there's there's a couple of parts actually um, going uh, kind of missing yeah I think I think nowadays this question is probably worth a merit terrible terrible I know what if what if we actually say um, what if I was to flip this guys shall I flip this question here just to make it a little bit a um, little bit more uh, interesting what if I say um, mm, 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 mm. I'm just trying to think. Ah, here's a question that I could ask you. Um, um, and I know this might not be a, a kind of like this is on the spot kind of question. Uh, what is, what's the thing? The crossbar was two meters high, right? The crossbar was two meters high. So what if I put a question like this? If the crossbar is, um, crossbar is two meters high, then the question is how close uh, can the person take the kick from can the person take the kick or how far uh, before goal is not converted so let me just draw you guys the shape and then you can kind of see this all right so there's two situations that's happening obviously there's a rugby post there and then we've got another rugby post there now that height there is going to be two meters that height there is going to be two meters so i'm literally asking uh my first question is that um how close does the kicker need to be so that it will it will actually clear the bar and then the other one is how far can the kicker be so that it kind of clears the bar does that kind of make sense the question i'm trying to ask there because i know i'm just kind of making random questions up here but let's say we keep the same the same graph right we keep the same graph because I'm, I'm guessing like that's what the type of question they probably would ask you like to kind of um, but I, I guess the way I had written it was quite awful <laughs> that I needed to draw a diagram to show you guys but they might actually know how to write the words in a much better way than I have done it but uh, I will leave that question for you guys and see what you guys actually come up with for your answers so okay 
the other way to think about this question, Vanch, is uh, basically y value is 2, what is the x value, and then write uh, an explanation about it, like um, what, like, kind of like what's the, what would happen before and after that value. So do this for me first, because like, remember, this is the, this is the graph. Um, these are the graphs that we have here, right? So my question right now is the football crossbar is at two meters. And as you can see, there is two points here. There's this one and there is this one. And I want you guys to find out what those two question marks are. Uh, and then we can learn how to interpret that answer into what's happening with the diagram below. So do that first. Put y equals to 2 and find out what the two x values are. We're going to get me a refill for the drinks. And I shall be back. By the way, anyone from Mrs. Wall's class made it to the tutorial today? If not, I'm telling on you guys. I'm gonna give her a message and say, these guys, they basically tricked you, miss. They said they were gonna be here today and none of them have shown up. Looking at the numbers, 45, about 25 in a class. Not even one. Ah, oh, those guys tricked. All right, guys, look. Um, <laughs> This is the part, uh, yeah, yeah, Archie Bruce, you probably want to use those equations. Um, sorry, I've just got an ad coming, I just need to skip it. So here, here is how you're going to do it, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys this in the graphics calculator. Um, you could try and do this, I'm trying to think, algebraically, it's going to be a pain to try and solve it algebraically, all right? Uh, particularly because um, you guys would not have done quadratic equations. Some of you might have not done it yet. So I think it's a bit mean to try and get you to do this on um, by manually. But what are we going to do is it's very simple. We're going to go into graph mode. I got a bit, there's no distance mentioned. Actually, that's what we're trying to figure out. But let's have a look, all right? And, and you'll see what I'm trying to show you here. So actually, no, I got a better idea. Mm, should I do that? Yeah, let's do this here. Hang on. I might show it. No, I will show it to you guys in your graphics calculator because you guys actually don't have Desmos there in your thing. So what we're going to do is we are going to kind of have a look at these. Um, first off, I'm going to put this graph in here. So I've got uh, 0 0.1. No, that's going to be negative 0 0.1. Negative 0 0.1x multiplied by x minus 10. So what I've done is I've actually just drawn the graph here. And the other thing that's that's really useful, guys, for you is the, the, the view window here. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm just going to click on initial, which is I think it just resets everything. And as you can see, my parabola is looking, where is it? It's kind of like looking here like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change it a little bit because I know I want it between 0 and 10. So in here, currently the x min is negative 6.3. I'm going to change that to 0. And then for the max, I'm going to change it to 11. Maybe I might actually change the one above to minus 1 so we can actually see the graph better. All right. So here is the uh, part of the ball itself, right? Now, I want to know at how far from the kicker takes is... Is it going to be two meters so what i can do is there's two ways i can do this one i could click on g solve and go into f6 and there's something called xcal so if i click on xcal it says enter y value so i'm going to put in two as the y value and if i click yes there is my first answer which is 2.76 all right 2.76 is my first answer 
Now, because parabolas are symmetrical, if I go 10 minus 2.76, that's roughly, uh, what is it, 7.24 maybe? So if I click on this next one, as you can see, I've got 7.236, which is the second point. So basically, at those two points, the Y value is actually equal to 2. So hopefully you guys got those two points. Now, so let me do a little demonstration here. No, I'm not going to do it. Now, let's try it. Let's try it. So we're going to go in here. So my graph is negative 0 0.1x, x minus 10. Uh, settings. Oh, God. Let's go negative 1 and then 11 and 4 all right so as you guys can see this is the path of the ball and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a line y equals to 2 and basically this is the height of the um, the crossbar right above the crossbar of the rugby ball um, of the rugby crossbar I think I'm getting it right and then so there are my two points right there I've got 2.764 and 7.236 now if the kicker is closer than 2.764 then let me just show you what I what that rugby ball is gonna look like so 2.764 so here is the post right now I'm gonna see if I can try and make this post I'm gonna get X is equal to 2.8 2.764 okay so x equals to 2.764 and I want it between 0 and and 2 actually I might actually do this this might actually work better give me one second guys no I'm clicking on the wrong thing what I'm gonna do is get rid of this that's the rugby po um, post right there and what I'm going to do is, oh no, let's actually go that. 2.764. I'm going to change this to K. Just bear with me because it just takes a little bit of time to step um, set it up. Once I set it up, we will be fine. So K is going to be between 0 to, yeah, let's go 8. No, 10. All right, so what we've got here is, in, how do I lock this two points? Sorry, just give me one second. I just want to try and set this up. Okay, so as you guys can see, um, if, I'm just going to press play. So if the crossbar passes this point here, uh, I'm talking about... So when it actually goes point past 7.263, then the ball is actually not going to make the make the goal, right? And if it's before 2.764, the rugby ball is going to be going underneath the crossbar. All right. So if I was to pause this, let me just pause this. So at 2.764, it's going to go above the crossbar, which means it's going to be a goal. But if it if the guy is actually closer than 2.764 then it's actually going to go underneath the crossbar and likewise if we actually go all the way down to the other end at 7.6 uh, 7.23 whatever this value here was it's going to be safe but if the kicker is actually more than 7.23 meters away from the uh, the crossbar then the ball is not going to go past the goal and it's actually going to go underneath so the two values that we were looking for is these two values and then you've got to try and explain it um, how I did with the with the diagram so if you look at the diagram below uh, those two values that we've got was 2.76 so if he is uh, the if the distance is uh, anything less than 2.76 he's the ball is gonna go underneath and anything over 7.23 the ball is going to go underneath the post as well so that's the way you kind of um, explain it
Nita, I'm sorry, I've, I've completely missed you with that one. I don't know what you, please, could you please write the different types of equations for graphs and tables? I'm not sure what you're asking there, Nita. Ah, uh, yes, perfect, perfect. That's, I, I think, uh, Mighty, I, you, I don't think you could have said it any better than that. I think that's exactly how I'd write the answer. Um, perhaps that's the way I should have asked the question. I should have actually asked the question, at what distances would this kicker would have converted uh, this this goal I think you just made me write a question there beautiful beautiful thank you for that mighty I appreciate it oh is it did I mess up somewhere um Gyananjan did I, m I must have messed up somewhere if I did I'm, I'm sorry uh can you show how to put it in the calculator again yes I could so all I've done here is just put that value there. Uh, make sure when you guys use the X, you actually use this X underneath the red alpha, and then you should be good to go with that. Now, argument error, if that ever happens, uh, you could try resetting your calculator. Um, so that's my suggestion. Sometimes it happens when you don't put the multiplication symbols properly. Uh, QRT, uh, goat. What I would, what I would say to you is, have a look at the, the playlist that I've pinned there. Um, what I'm, um, I think what you're asking is, could you play for the first bit of rugby? How do we know? How do we know the value of bit? So QRT, it's like this. That that question, you could actually use um, vertex or intercept because in this case you actually have all three points and because you have all three points you can choose which format you want to go with now in some cases you won't be able to do that in some cases they might not give you the vertex they might give you like oh it, the distance from these two the the starting point and the end point is like 20 and then it might reach a height of something at like x distance or whatever so in that case you might just have to use only vertex uh, sorry not vertex intercept um, but if they give you the turning point, which is the vertex, then it's much easier to use the vertex form there. Uh, Ella, how do, you, how do you solve this algebraically? Uh, you would have to use quadratic formula because we're getting some nasty decimal points. So I would have to say quadratic formula, which some of you guys have not learned. Um, you will learn at level two. But for now, you can actually use the graphics calculator. Landon for the t-shirt today. Max, were you, were you in Mrs. Wall's class? I guess you're the only one that showed up today, buddy. Uh, no problems, Jody. You're welcome. <laughs> Good luck with it, Max. Good luck. Guys, I realize it's... it's, it's I didn't realize how, how late it got. But like, look, I think we had a good solid chunk of time. Um, and I know we only did like a, a couple of questions. But that quadratic question, it's like really kind of um, just practice, guys. That's all you got to do. You, you know, folks, you've got to practice um, and keep practicing those questions. And if you do have questions that you feel stuck at, send it to me. All right. Like, I think that's what these uh, I'd like to use these sessions moving forward. Uh, rather than covering sessions, I'd love to answer your questions. So if you can send it, um, that would be uh, really good. Uh, no worries, Vishal. You're welcome. Ah oh, yeah, yeah. That's it's um that's what it is. As you guys can see, I'm I'm shattered today, man. Like honestly, I thought I I thought I was crazy to try and do a tutorial um tonight, but um, guess what? Here we are, and just kind of done and dusted. Uh, Kr Dolphin, sir, do you know how to make the calculator number the graphs? I number the graphs. How do you mean number the graphs, Dolphin? <laughs> I'll let uh, I'll let Mrs. Walls know that you showed up, uh, Max. But in to find a in question one, they give an equation in not vertex. How did you know? Well, that's because I know that intercept form is written as separate, so they actually go x times x minus something. 
So have a look at that. Um, I think it's two tutorials down from this playlist that I've pinned here. Have a look at that QRT and then you will um, kind of understand what I'm talking about. Uh, show the values of X and Y lines that is. Uh, Dolphin, I think what you're going to have to do for that. Just give me a second. So if you want to see the table, what you can do is instead of graph function, you just go back into menu, go into table function. And that's the, your equation. You click on table. Oh, no. Sometimes this happens. I'm going to have to go try. Let's see. Is it because I didn't put a bracket? Is that why you're getting frustrated? There you go. So it's actually going to give you a table. And then you can actually put in the values. If you want a particular value, you could try it. Five. I don't know if this was backwards. Can I try it? Yeah, no, it doesn't allow me to fill in fill in the y value it just allows me to do the x values there you go uh what else did i miss because i showed up yeah i got that uh no worries you're welcome oh folks you're welcome it's not a problem it's, it's a good good way to end the day it's been a very busy day but good way uh, I'll, I'll have a look at it later Gananjin because I've, I've still got to do a bit, bit of my schoolwork and I've got to do a couple of videos before the end of the night um, I think I've just missed a whole lot of comments I do apologize about that uh, I, can't, I need to maximize it so I can actually read it can I just make my comments hang on got that got that Oh, Vanch, that's all right, because look, that's the whole point of mocks. You kind of get get a bit sh shell-shocked, and then you kind of start getting your work and work ready, and then you should kind of just power through it. No worries. You're welcome, Marco. I think it's level two tomorrow. <laughs> your grandfather recommended. Wow, I'm, I'm curious to know, Maisha, how he found out about it. That, I'm sure that's a great story behind that. Uh, I'm not sure how you can do that, uh, Dolphin, about the values on the x-axis lines. Not sure at all. <clears throat> I could try Shadow King, but I'm, I'm running out of time at the moment, as always. So, don't know how much time we'll get. It's so funny that you guys actually say that it's a pay-to-win calculator. It's absolutely possible to do this without a um, GC. No, no, definitely can't do it. I, I don't know how to do exponential equations on the graphics calculator. Uh, yes, it is, Marco. Sorry, I kind of thought I said that. No probs, Vishal, no probs. Uh, love, love, two streams. I wonder why, Marco, I wonder why. Uh, Jamie, we were just doing a couple of, um, couple of quadratic questions. Um... I will try and do the exam, Maisha, this, this weekend sometimes. Um, but it all depends at the moment. As you can see, the sickness is starting to kind of set in. Um, I've got to try and kind of power through it. Uh, once I power through it, maybe get a bit of rest. I don't know if I'm, I don't think I'm getting rest tomorrow anyway. So uh, maybe Friday, see if I can get a couple of hours extra sleep and uh, should be good to go. Now I've, I've tried looking bunch and like I'll be honest I've been trying to figure it out for a long time with um, the Casio calculators and I've, and I've struggled um, but they're, they're, they have the format they have is slightly different that's all than the one that we the answer schedule is expecting no I've not heard of that met method GZ <laughs> I thought so, Marco. I thought so. Anyway, guys, look. Um, I've got a. I like. I'm. I'm gonna be honest. I've got a f like a hell of a lot of messages that um. I've got to get through today. Uh, jeez, there's like some 30, 35 messages to get through. So um, I probably have to kind of be polite and just respond 
to a few and um, I will actually see you guys tomorrow night now tomorrow night no I'm not seeing you guys tomorrow night when am I seeing you guys next when am I seeing you next I am seeing you on Monday for a repeat of TEG and then we've got one two three four five five sessions left and then we are done after that man that's gonna go real quickly all right guys take care thank you again for joining max i'll pass on the message that you attended today um yeah and uh look as always i'm gonna say like uh if um i know some of the uh, some of the folks have been asking me on um insta hey look can you actually come to my school um it is absolutely possible folks um just all i would say is have a chat with one of your teachers my email is here pass them on and um and you know would love to come and have a chat and just kind of uh, make this real as um, who was it that was someone that came on earlier said that I think it was Kati who actually said it's not just some random youtuber um, you know it, it is a real person here so yeah would love to kind of come and catch up with a few of you guys so if it's something that you want to do talk to your teachers get them to get in touch with me would love to come for a visit but till then I've got to get going and uh, get on with this responding to all these other things Thank you so much for joining today and I will see you guys at the next stream. All right, bye-bye.